In this video, I'll be changing the coolant on a 2014 Toyota Corolla. To start, the car should be parked on a level surface or facing slightly uphill. A big uphill will cause less coolant to drain out, and parking downhill can trap air in the engine block, so it should be avoided. It's also important to park outdoors, since we'll be starting the engine later. Coolant irritates the skin, eyes, and lungs, and it can get very hot, so make sure to wear gloves, and always wear eye protection. Also, make sure to keep coolant away from pets because they are attracted to it, and rinse off any spills with water as soon as possible. Before working on the cooling system, the engine must be allowed to cool down completely first, which takes about 4 hours, depending on the outside temperature. To check if the engine is cold, turn the ignition to on without starting the car, all the lights on the dashboard should light up, and the temperature gauge should stay all the way down. Once the gauge shows that the engine is cold, I will also feel the upper radiator hose as a double check, and it should feel completely cool to the touch. If the hose feels warm, then the coolant inside may be hot, so make sure to wait until the hose is completely cold. Next, I'll disconnect the negative battery cable for safety, which is especially important for cars with a remote starter. Alright, so now that the engine is cold, it's safe to drain the coolant, and I'll start by placing my drain pan under the car, just below the hole in the cover. And now, to release the coolant, I'll loosen the radiator drain plug, which is located at the bottom of the radiator, on the driver's side. Never unscrew the radiator drain plug when the engine is hot or running. Unscrewing it will cause pressurized hot coolant and steam to be released, which can cause serious burns and injury. And now I'll reach it from the top, and unscrew it a few turns until coolant drains out, making sure to leave it partly screwed in, so it doesn't fall out. While the coolant is draining, vacuum will be created in the system, which will drain the coolant from the reservoir tank as well. And to speed things up, I'll open the reservoir tank cap, and leave it on loosely. If the reservoir tank looks dirty once it's drained, it can be refilled and drained again to clean it, using a quarter inch diameter tube. I'll tape a funnel to one end of the tube, using electrical tape, pour fresh coolant into the funnel to fill up the tube, and once the tube is filled, I'll cover one end, and insert the other end to the bottom of the reservoir tank. Now I'll uncover the tube, and the reservoir will drain out. And once it's empty, I'll remove the radiator fill cap, Never remove the cap when the engine is hot or running, because pressurized hot coolant and steam will be released, which can cause serious burns and injury. And now I'll check the seals on the back of the cap, to make sure the rubber is not dried out, damaged or cracking, and if the cap is very old, it's a good idea to replace it before it fails. And I'll place it back on loosely, to prevent dirt from falling inside. Even with the cap removed, coolant will drain out slowly, and it will take about half an hour to drain out completely. About 4 quarts will drain out, however, the system capacity is 5.8 quarts, so 1.8 quarts will remain trapped inside. This means that one drain and fill replaces 70% of the coolant, and to replace more, a second one can be done to replace 90%. The plastic cover can carry coolant to other spots as well, so make sure to have another drain pan ready, just in case this happens. Once the coolant has finished draining, the drain plug can be removed and inspected. So I'm making sure that the o-ring is in good shape, it shouldn't have any flat spots, cracks or visible damage, and the plug should look nice and even, without any cracks. When reinstalling the plug, make sure dirt didn't fall in the radiator tube, and the plug and o-ring should be kept completely clean. And I'll tighten it by hand only, using tools can over tighten it, and break the plastic. And now I'll change the water pump, which I'll show in a separate video, that will be linked up in the cards. Here's the old coolant, it's important to measure it, and make sure that the same amount goes back in. If less coolant goes in, then came out, it means air is trapped in the system, which can cause the engine to overheat. 
And to dispose of the old coolant, make sure to bring it to a recycling center because it's toxic to the environment. To refill the system, I'll be using Toyota Pink Super Long Life Coolant, which comes only pre-mixed. I have the Canadian version, which is a 55-45 mix, and it protects from minus 40 to 129 Celsius. There's also a 50-50 mix for warmer climates, which protects from minus 34 to 265 Fahrenheit. Pre-mixed coolant should never have water added to it, so avoid flushing the system because it will leave water trapped in, which will dilute the coolant. So about one gallon of old coolant drained out, and I bought two gallons of new coolant to make sure I have enough. So let's refill the system. I'll start by refilling the reservoir tank to the full line, making sure not to overfill. And when closing the cap, make sure it snaps back on. Now to install the spill-free funnel, I'll put the green adapter in first, seal side facing down, place the cap over it, and turn it clockwise to lock it in. And now I'll place the funnel in the adapter and press it down to make a tight connection. Remove the drain plug, and now I'll pour in my new coolant. This funnel makes this job much easier, and in case you're interested in one, I'll have a link to it down below in the video description. So I'll keep topping this up, and it will take about 5 minutes until the bubbles stop coming out. Once air stops coming out, I'll squeeze the upper radiator hose 10 to 20 times until there's no more air coming out. This step is extremely important. If it's not done, bleeding the system later will be much more difficult. And I will also do the same for the lower radiator hose. Next, I'll reconnect the battery. And now I'll start the engine. Make sure the car is parked outdoors, never run the engine in a garage or an enclosed area, even if the garage door is open. The funnel should be filled with plenty of coolant now. And with the engine started, I'll make sure the AC is turned off, turn the temperature all the way to hot, set the blower speeds to 1, make sure it's blowing from the dashboard vents, and recirculate should be turned off. I'll also put a window down, to keep the interior from getting too hot. A lot more air bubbles should be coming out now, and I'll let it run for about 20 minutes until the coolant warms up and reaches 83 degrees Celsius, which is when the thermostat valve will open. It's important to keep the funnel topped up, and check the temperature gauge often to make sure it doesn't overheat. In case the engine overheats, make sure to turn it off immediately and allow it to cool down. While the engine warms up, the dashboard vents should start blowing warm air. If the air is not warm, that means there is a large air pocket trapped in the system, so the car should be turned off and allowed to cool down. And once the coolant reaches above 83 degrees Celsius, and the coolant gauge is close to the middle, the thermostat valve will open, and more air bubbles should be noticed in the funnel. And now I'll rev the engine up, to 1800 RPM for 2 minutes to bleed the remaining air out. And once there is no more air coming out through the funnel, the engine should be turned off. For safety, make sure the engine doesn't run for too long and do not touch the coolant in the funnel because it can get hot enough to cause serious burns. If there is steam coming out through the funnel, make sure not to inhale it because it's toxic, and wait for the coolant to cool down before removing the funnel. And I'll remove the funnel now, being careful not to spill. I'll put the plug in first, twist it out of the adapter, and pour it back in my coolant jug. And I'll unscrew the lock cap, and take the adapter out. The radiator cap should be reinstalled as soon as possible now, so coolant can be drawn in from the reservoir tank. The same amount of coolant that drained out should have gone back in by now, and if there's a noticeable difference, then there's air still trapped in the system, 
and it should be bled out before driving the car. A small amount of air will bleed out on its own over the next few warm-up cycles. However, a large amount of air should be bled out before driving because it can cause hot spots and overheating. Now I'll let the engine cool down completely again and as it cools down, coolant will shrink and the level in the reservoir tank will go down. Once it has cooled down completely, I'll make sure the reservoir level is still at the full mark and I'll check under the car to make sure there are no leaks. And I'll go for a 10 minutes drive now, making sure to check the temperature gauge more often and then I'll check the reservoir level and for leaks again after driving. For the next few days, it's important to keep checking the reservoir level and for leaks daily to make sure the coolant level stays topped up. If you found this video useful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, your support is really appreciated, and consider subscribing to my channel, I'll be posting more videos in the future. Thanks for watching!